sound of a train whistle in mountainous Sudhampur at a height of 810 meters above the sea level is nothing short of a dream come true for the people of the region. So this is a national project and uh, uh, apart from the engineering uh, marvel that it is, it, is, uh, it, it, uh, it will be expanding the railway network into, uh, into Jammu and Kashmir. There's a lot of tourism potential uh, which is there and a lot of tourists are visiting. Uh, it will be an all-weather uh, route where people will be able to uh, commute and go and the goods and services which the railway offers will be available around the year irrespective of the kind of weather. So it will be a win-win situation for everybody, for the railways as well, as well as for the people. The estimated rupees 11,300 billion Kashmir link that has been taken up as a national project is perhaps the most important project taken up by the railways since independence. Border Roads Organization or BRO has made a remarkable contribution by building roads in hostile weather conditions and difficult terrains. Today, BRO is responsible for construction, improvement and maintenance of all important roads in the valley. Jammu and Kashmir boasts of a web of more than 15,000 kilometers of roads knitting together strategically important border areas and urban centers. Emphasis is also being given to the development of rural roads and under the Prime Minister Grameen Sarak Yojna, all the far-flung and remote villages in Jammu and Kashmir will be connected by road by 2009 at the cost of Rs 54,000 million. These changes are also visible in the energy sector. The state has tremendous potential for generating electricity which is yet to be fully exploited. It is estimated that it can generate around 20,000 megawatts through hydroelectric power projects. Jammu and Kashmir, apart from its natural beauty, is also known for its many pilgrimage sites such as Amarnath, and Vaishnu Devi. The tourism infrastructure in Jammu and Kashmir is up to the mark and is well equipped to cater to the rush of tourists. These are the scenes of the year 2003 when mobile service was introduced in JNK for the first time. Thousands of tech savvy mobile enthusiasts queued outside the mobile registration offices. And it is not just mobiles which caught the fancy of the youth in JNK, but broadband and internet have also become popular with Generation Next. The BPO sector that is unlocking the potential of the youth in the state is fast spreading its wings, not only in the valley but also in Jammu and Ladakh. The young blood of Kashmir is clearly adopting to the urban lifestyle and are living life the metropolitan way. It's not just reflected in their penchant towards trendy jobs at plush call centers or multinational chains, but their propensity towards trendy modern music like rock speaks volumes about this transformation and transition. The advent of call centers and multinational corporations has undoubtedly captured the imagination of the city youth. But joining the armed forces and air force still largely remains the first preference of youth living in the rural and remote areas of Jammu and Kashmir. And to reach out to the youth, both the Indian Army and Air Force regularly organize recruitment camps in the remote and far-flung areas of the state. The response at these camps is overwhelming. With its energetic youth power, Jammu and Kashmir is one of the fastest growing states in India today. And if this growth continues unhindered, the day is not far when the state will take its rightful place among the most advanced states of the country.